Good morning. Good morning. And uh, welcome. Uh, for those of you who are going to watch on television, hopefully that's a, it's not television, watch on the video. No offense a lot of you. But uh, I'm Greg Carter, and I pastor Friendship at Old Town United Methodist Churches. And uh, hopefully some of you are, are new. Uh, but uh, just enjoy and worship the Lord with us. Um, are there announcements that we need to make? First, we're prayer page on Friday. Anybody yet? Any other announcements that you know of? Okay. Any birthdays or anniversaries? Nobody's going to admit any birthdays, huh? Alright, nobody got any older? I am. Uh-oh. Since I get the money out of here. That's what she, she's admitting it. Okay. I'm admitting it. So you're 39 now? Yeah. Oh, and 39. And, and old. 39. And Yeah, 
Bill Harmon. Yes. And I have a new great grandson. <laughs> All right. His name is Ace Allen Allegra. <laughs> new great grandson. It's Kathy's great grandson. We've got a step grand, great grandson, and two great grandson. Okay. And what was his name again? Ace Allen Allegra. Ace. Yes. Okay. Okay, will they let me see him, you think? Will they let me see him, you think? That you see him? Yeah. I don't know. They said one at a time. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. You see him? Uh, ATM2. Okay, yeah. That's the uh, part. Anybody else? 
Yeah. Let's pray for the world. I mean, we want to get the USA back. Yes. And great for the eradication of the coronavirus. Yeah. If you're wondering why the windows are open, um, and the door was open, but it kept blowing my stuff around. Um, for some reason, the air wasn't working. So, it, it is now. Is that your, no, it's not. So, okay. Well, I'm glad we've got the newfangled windows that let you have some fresh air come in. Okay, then let's go to the more prepared. Almighty and gracious God, we come before you and we have so many concerns. And you know them, Lord. And we, we pray for the children and the, the school teachers and the administrators. They have such hard decisions to make. And we just ask you to keep them all safe as we get closer and closer to uh, school restarting. Uh, we pray for Dennis and ask you to be with him and, and uh, with that leg being removed. We pray for Bill Harmon. And we thank you, Lord, for that new great grandbaby, Ace. We ask you to be with Frank for his, for his heart situation and uh, be with the middle family and their loss. And we, we pray for healing for everyone who has this uh, COVID-19, Lord. ask you to be with them. And we pray for Phil. And we ask you to be with Linda and Gail and Ann. Just touch their lives. Touch their hearts, Lord. We continue to lift up Ed. Rick as he battles cancer, Glenn and Karen as they continue their struggle, and Ida and Tina, a mother and daughter, Lord, we just ask you to be with them. We pray for John, we ask you to touch his life, and Lord, be with our, our nation, be with the world, Lord with this virus. And we just ask you in your precious healing name just to take it out. Just wipe it out. You can do this just a snap of your finger, Lord. We're asking you to do it. Father, be in our service this day. Give us what we need to glorify you. For it's in your precious name that we ask. Amen. Oh, there is one more thing I forgot to mention in the announcements. We're having communion for those of you who are uh, watching online. So if you haven't done so, you might want to go get a piece of bread, a little juice. It don't matter what kind of juice. It don't matter what kind of bread. Because we're going to anoint it here in a minute. Maybe two minutes. And uh, but we're going to anoint that. And anything that you have, you can take in remembrance of what Jesus did for us. Okay. Earning respect. Yeah. Thank you, Jamie. <laughs> he gets here early in the morning and and he's the one that found out no air conditioning, so um, had the windows open and when I got here the door opened, so we thank you. We thank you for putting all this up on our screen. Well, we're getting to the end of our uh, Ten Commandments. We're at number nine this week. And uh, 
We're going to talk today about how to be respected by others. You know, I found the governor said I didn't have to wear this if uh, the leader, when you're leading worship, said I didn't have to wear this. So I think I'm going to do this. <laughs> now I can talk a little bit. But uh, I found an article, I think it was last week, about great American lies. I want to see how many of us have either heard this, these lies or maybe even used one. How about this one? The check is in the mail. I'll start my diet tomorrow. Ever used that one? I have. <laughs> How about this one? We service what we sell. Or give me your number and I'll have the doctor call you right back. And your money will be cheerfully refunded if you don't like the product. <laughs> oh, yeah. How about this one? One size fits all. <laughs> sounds good. Yeah, it sounds good. It isn't true, but it sounds good. And this one. This offer is limited to the first 100 people who call. Hurry though, we've only got 10,000 left. This hurts me more than it does you. You want to bet? Or, now that we can go back to restrooms, your table will be ready in a few minutes. Half hour later. You know. How about this one? It's not the money, it's the principle. Trust me, it's the money. Or I'm from I'm from the federal government and I'm here to help you. Hmm. Sure you are. You know, the inventor of the uh, lie detector. Dr. Leonard Peeler. Dr. Leonard Peeler was his name. And he uh, surveyed about a thousand people as he developed you know, his invention. And you know what the conclusion he came to? People are basically dishonest. Hmm. See, and that's why God gave us this ten, the ninth commandment. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. That's Exodus 20, verse 15. And then there's Proverbs 17, 7. This is the Good News translation. Trusted people do not tell lies. How old were you when you told your first lie? I think I was in diapers. You know, there was a mother set her son down and said, Son, you know liars don't go to heaven. He said, Well, Mom, have, have you ever told a lie? Huh? Yeah. Has Daddy ever told a lie? Yeah. Has Aunt Martha ever told a lie? Bobby and Billy, have, have they ever told lies? Mm -hmm. Yes. The little boy says, well, I guess they're the only people going to heaven are God and George Washington. <laughs> <laughs> See, the, the, the simple message this morning is tell the truth. And that includes about other people. Don't burn somebody's reputation. You know, some of you have heard this when you were little, but there was a saying in World War II defense factories 
You know what it said? Loose lips. You remember? Sink ships. Well, loose lips destroy lives too. So God's telling us, watch what you say. And we're going to talk this morning about how to respect others and how to gain respect for yourself. The Bible warns us about three types of false testimony. And the first is gossip. Somebody, somebody said it's hearing something about somebody it's saying something you like about somebody you don't like. See, gossip is repeating private information by someone who's not part of the problem, and they're surely not part of the solution. Proverbs 26, verse 20 and 22 says, without wood, this is this is this is good. Without wood, the fire goes out. Without gossip, a quarrel dies. But the words of the gossip are like choice morsels. They go down to the man's innermost parts. Do you agree with that? Doesn't gossip taste good? Yeah. We, we, we love gossip. That's awful what we do. There was a pastor who got up and preached on gossip. You know what the closing song was? I love to tell the story. Now there's, there's a lot of gossip. There's a lot of different forms of gossip. You know, there's a false sympathy kind of gossip. When you put your gossip in, you know, that you feel that. Uh, it really breaks my heart that you just feel that way. See, gossip sadly allows us to enjoy somebody else's sin. And, and often it's through asking questions. It sounds innocent, but it's really just gossip. Have you heard? Is it true that, you know, most beauty shops, the gossip would curl your hair. You wouldn't even get anything done. Just go in there and sit and listen to the gossip. And then there's Christians' gossip. Can you believe that? Christians would gossip? Well, I'm just sharing this with you so you can pray about it. Yeah, sure. Folks, we'd be a lot healthier if we confessed our own sin rather than somebody else's gossip. Then there's slander. Just outright false accusations. James 4 verse 11 says, Brothers and sisters, do not slander one another. Anyone who speaks against his brother or judges him speaks against the law. There is only one lawgiver and judge. Only God has the right to judge. So guess what? If you're judging somebody, you're playing God. Don't make up stories that, uh, that hurt people. And you can ruin somebody's reputation with one word. Oh, he's a great guy. But. Oh, he's really popular. But. See, the Bible says death and life are within the power of the tongue. And you can even slander somebody <laughs> with silence. 
somebody asks you a question and you just kind of smile and grin. See, your mannerisms say volumes. People are talking about something and they say, well, I, 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 I just better not say anything. Well, you don't have to. The damage is already done. You already put the doubt in their mind. Well, uh, I don't need to say that. No, because you've already said it. Proverbs 10, verse 10 says, Holding back the truth causes trouble. Gossip, slander, even flattery. You know, insincere praise. You compliment somebody, but you don't really mean it. In Proverbs 26, verse 28 says, Flattery, now this is tough. <laughs> flattery is a form of hatred, and it moves cruelly. In Hebrew, the word flattery literally means to make the tongue slick. You ever heard of slick talking? So why do we say things to people who really don't mean it? Proverbs 29 verse 25 says, Whoever flatters his neighbor is spreading a net for his feet. It's a trap. Flattery is a, is a trap. And we flatter somebody so we can get something out of them. Proverbs 26 verse 23 in the Good News says, Insincere talk hides what you really think. It's like a fine glaze on a cheap pot. Then the next verse says, the hypocrite hides behind his own flattering words. It's just wrong. Flattery is just wrong. And you get respected by being honest. Not by gossiping or slavery, flattery. And why do we lie? What causes that? Well, Jeremiah 17, 9 says, the heart is deceitful. And Jesus said, out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. Remember the old dove, Truth and Consequences on the show, Truth and Consequences. Remember that? Truth can have consequences. And we lie because we don't have the courage oftentimes to say no. We were asked to go uh, to a lady's house uh, Thursday. And I asked Carol, I said, do you feel you want to go? Well, uh, I don't know. I, I guess. And I knew she didn't want to go. So I called the lady back up and told her. You know, later I said, we're, we're, we can't go. I said, we're seeing this baby all the time. And we're just afraid to give it something. Because this woman's uh, fiance, she's an older lady. Her husband died. I buried him several years ago. But anyway, uh, Carol just didn't want to say no. I said no. Uh, Have you ever said, oh, I'm sorry, I can't, when you really mean, I don't want to? See, fear calls Adam and Eve to lie. And to be blunt, we haven't changed much. Honestly, officer, and have you ever heard this one? Honestly, sir, I didn't see that light. I didn't see that it was real. Or, or get angry and want to get even? Well, I'll show him. Or pride, you know, when we want to impress people. I think job applications and resumes, the ultimate form of creative writing. A 
Pat, I bet you got a lot of those <laughs> over the years. People want a job. You look at it and you read it and you go, man, if they did everything they said, they've done, they'd have to be 50 years old. They're only 23. How would that be? Executive secretary, well, what's that really mean? I bring coffee to the boss. We, we're dishonest if it's in our benefit. And so many people are dishonest that they don't even believe the truth when it's told. Okay. Dorothy and Carlos Dyer. Love those people. Well, Dorothy uh, quit driving and got rid of her car. Now, this was only about 27 years ago, 28 years ago. They traded in. Mint condition. I wish we could afford a bar. Low miles, you know. And they told the dealer the truth, by the way. She only drove to church and to the grocery, and it was uh, parked in the garage. All those things were true. But the dealer had it on his lot for months, trying to sell it because everybody thought it was a lie. But you know, though, you want you know her, and it was the truth. How far would it have been from Dorothy's house to here? Mile? Maybe. You know, and of course, you know, the grocery store, a mile or a few feet. <laughs> you know, but they thought it was a lie. They get sad and sad. See, we need a change of heart. How do we do that? Well, we think about all those things. Because whatever goes in your mind is going to come out. Philippians 4, verse 8. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, pure, lovely, admirable, if anything is excellent and praiseworthy, think about those things. See, because what you think about is going to come out in your life. Who cares? If somebody, you know, is committing high, uh, uh, adultery in Hollywood or something like that. Well, God does, but we don't need to know about that. And being honest brings respect. Be a person of integrity. Examine your own heart and think honest thoughts. And refuse, here's another one, refuse to give or receive gossip. Proverbs uh, 11, 13 in the Living uh, Bible. A gossip goes around spreading rumors while a trustworthy man tries to keep them quiet. If you're tempted to pass on a rumor, Ask yourself, am I willing to sign off on that? Well, I, I was just speaking off the record. Nothing's ever off the record. Don't let somebody go on and on and on and just soak it all up. You want to stop the, the gossip? It's real simple. Have you checked that out? Are you sure that's true? Hmm. The law, Danny, is this true or not? The law says if you receive stolen goods, even if it's just a petty theft, you're more guilty than the person who stole it. Is it? He, I think I've seen his head shake. Okay? It's a felony to receive stolen goods, but it's only a misdemeanor if it's just, you know, a petty theft, right? Now I can see his head shaking. 
I'll try it. So, gossip is the same. You're more guilty than the person who started it. If you receive it and pass it on. And, 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 and you know this. The person who will gossip to you will gossip about you. You know, if somebody's gossiping to you, just be assured they've talked about you too. Okay. And keep your promises. He who, uh, Psalms 15, 4 and 5. He who keeps his oath, even when it hurts, shall never be shaken. Shaken. Are you a person of your word? Proverbs 25, verse 14 says, Look, a cloud of wind without rain is the man who boasts of the gifts he never gives. See, there's a lot of people who promise the moon, but we respect people who keep their promise. And, and make it your goal to be an encourager. Ephesians uh, 4.29 I think that's what I read. Yeah. Do not let hope and talk come out of your mouth, but only that what is helpful for building up persons according to their need, that it may benefit those who listen. Hmm. Isn't that a good word? See, the Bible is so practical if we'll just follow it. So, before you say anything, think, T-H-I-N-K, is it true? Will it help? See, some things might be true, but they're not helpful. Is it inspiring? You know, is it an encouraging word or a discouraging word? Is it necessary? A lot of things we say, church, just aren't necessary. And then finally, is it kind? Is it a kind thing to say? See, this command says, tell the truth. Not to just call it, but just because something's true doesn't mean you have the right to share it. Ephesians 4, 15 says, Speak the truth, how? In love. God's a God of truth. And Jesus said, I am the way, I am the what? Truth, and I am the life. God says, whatever you, a man sows, that's what he's going to read. You gossip, you're going to be gossiped about. You lie, you're going to be lied to. But you know, you can't get away with lying to God. Proverbs 10, verse 9 says, The man of integrity walks secure, but he who takes crooked paths will be found out. Politicians, dare I even go there? Let's say no, we don't have time to go there. We got communion. But uh, they talk, they, they'll say one thing to one group and tell another thing to another group. And I don't know why they think they can get away with it. Now, especially with all of the, you know, social media and everything, and the phones, everybody can record it. You hear one thing. They're with a different group and they say something else. But God, see, God wants uh, us to tell the absolute truth, complete integrity. Mean 
what you say and say what you mean. And that's not easy, always, it might cost. Yeah. But you want people to respect you, have integrity, so people will say, well, if they said it, they mean it, must be true. That's the kind of, of integrity to have. See, and, and if you have lied or slandered or flattered people or gossip, you, you need to you need to fess up. Ask God to forgive you, and maybe you need to make restitution. And ask God to give you a new heart. See, and that's the problem. We lie because we're insecure. And you don't think the truth is, is good enough. But God is a heart specialist. Ask Him to work on your heart problems. And think before you speak. Don't, don't live through the grapevine. You know, I heard it through the grapevine. Don't even go there. Ephesians 4, verse 25 tells us to put off falsehood and speak truthfully to each other. Why? Because we're members of one body. Ask God to give you character and integrity and to think about honest things and to commit yourselves to not giving gossip or even listening to it. Maybe you need to pray, Father, help me to keep my promises to others and to you, Lord. And ask Him to make you an encourager to let only things that build up and benefit others come out of our mouths. You know, I, I, if you don't remember a word that I say, I've been here this time, Last time I was there for seven years, this time I've been here for what? December, January, March, April, May, June, July. Eight months. If you don't remember a word I've said, that's fine. That's fine. But remember the verses. Remember God's word. So that we can be more like Jesus. And we ask this in his name. Okay, now we're going to have communion. If, you, if you've got your, uh, your juice and your bread there, now there's two, if, you, if you're alive here, there's two little things to peel back. The top one is thinner and easier to get off like that. And that's the uh, that's the bread, the first one, and then the bottom one is the, is the juice. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim my death until I return. Let us pray. Christ's body broken for you. And Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. Eat in remembrance. And this cup 
is of the new covenant of Jesus' blood shed for you. And Jesus said, Do this in remembrance of me. Now let us drink together.